unified life cycle simulation, you know, it's not a new idea. Um, you know, it's a, sort of an idea that's been around for, for at least 10 years. Uh, and the way that our customers have sort of tackled this is with point solutions. So life cycle simulation uh, involves design, where customers design their processes. Uh, and there is you know, a product called Pro2 that is the best in the marketplace that we provide and our customers use that for design. Uh, so the design department uses that. Then the next stage in the process lifecycle is the controls checkout. And we have a product called DynSim for controls checkout. Uh, and our customers use that. So they have to, you know, it's a se separate point solution. Um, and then subsequently, you know, when it comes to startup and uh, operations, we have the Romeo product for optimization and process optimization. Uh, and again, we're the market leader in that space. But the big drawback is that there are three point solutions used by three different departments and there's no continuity of uh, workflow or efficiency of execution. Well, well, Ian, but that's really not only true for our products. I mean, you can also uh, migrate a model from Pro2 to DynSim, right? But yes. this is true for everybody else in the market, really, right? I mean, all other process simulators in the market, they really are addressing one particular um, uh, task, you know, one particular department, one phase of the life cycle. And what unified life cycle simulation really means is to take one model from the plant design, from the first idea, and extend that model throughout the entire life cycle. Yeah, for sure, right? absolutely. So, so, um, uh, so it's you know, you know taken you know from uh, basic engineering through to detail engineering, startup operations, revamping you know through the entire uh, plant life cycle, and we think that this will lead to um, to many benefits. Uh, to many benefits, um, it's um, you know first of all the obvious one: it's going to reduce the simulation effort. We think you know think life cycle, think of the half, right? Um, it's going to enable completely new workflows, right? That were not there before. Yeah. You can you can go back and forth between steady state simulation and dynamic simulation. So which can't like be this, done today. Right? You know this can't be done today. And so so like this, you can really you know you know make a step change in process design by doing like a dynamic process design. And and this is really where plants today struggle. When you start up a new plant, um, it's it's really about you know it's not that the column is too big or too small or that the heat exchanger is too big. Or too small. It's really about controlling a reactor or a, you know a, a column that is oscillating. Um, so it's really dynamic phenomena. So so to consider dynamic phenomena already from early on, you know really you know we think can be a step change. You know having one unified model will will you know we think will break down departmental barriers. Right? They will all work from not only from one thermodynamic set, but really also have one model. Um, that um, that gives the same uh, results and yeah. and the same way of thinking. You know, users will have the same user interface. Um, it will it will be um, you know you know giving them one platform to work from. Yeah, easy to use, intuitive, efficient. You know, we programmed this next you know completely from the ground up. So we could build in anything that exists in modern IT today. It's like supporting parallel processing, um, cloud, SaaS, yeah. environment. No, uh, it's radical rethought in terms of ease of use. Uh, yeah. But those are just, let's say, features and functions benefits. No, but you know, really, this is, you know, the paradigm change is going to be the unified lifecycle simulation and the platform approach yeah. that it brings. Absolutely. It's so easy to extend, right? In, in today's um, simulation environments, you need to have programming skills to be able to extend them, uh, usually. Um, in in some central, um, you know, there is a model writing environment where you just put in equations, um, just like you would do, in, you know, in Excel or in another, you know, you know, you know, equation-like environment. And like this, users can really focus on the engineering task at hand, and they don't need to struggle with computers and programming and 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 the shortcomings yeah. of, you know, existing simulators. Yeah, you can get the design right. Uh, and make sure that it can be controlled before you actually go ahead and do the construction. So you can do the design, make sure the design can operate, and then you purchase the equipment and build the plant. Confident that it will work as you want it to work. Yeah. Well, also, an idea or a concept uh, that we just start to explore really is uh, that um, you know, if you think of Industry 4.0 and you know how it's knitting things together effectively, yeah. um, um, you know, such a 
uh, you know, one model of the entire plant, taking it through the entire plant life cycle, you know, uh, very much supports that concept of industry for the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. The platform approach is really a completely novel concept. It's a paradigm change to process simulation. Um, all process simulators are closed environments. If you want to extend them, you know, you've got to talk to software developers. You know, in the platform approach, you know, users can put in their own IP. They can put in um, their own equations. So like I explained, you know, it's you know, like really just putting, you know, putting in the you know, you know, the equation. Uh, you've got to understand your plant, but you don't need to struggle with IT, uh, you know, programming. Um, and that platform approach um, then you know opens up many many opportunities. Um, you know, first of all, um, those customers that want to keep their IP proprietary and uh, protect it, they don't need to. You know, they can easily put it in and don't need to share it with anyone else. Right? Um, we also think that the platform approach you know leads to many. Um, opportunities in, in different industries. Um, you know, let me cover the upstream and the EPC. Ian. Sure, um, absolutely. Maybe yeah. you can chip in with others. Um, so, so, so if you think of um, EPC companies, for example, right, they have highly standardized their work processes in detail engineering, materials management, um, cost costing. Um, if you look at the basic engineering, you know, the process uh, department uh, discipline. Um, you know, there's, there are loads of tools, all for specialized um, uh, tasks, right? There is, there is this Excel spreadsheet way of calculating. Um, there is this, um, you know, this, this, this uh, homegrown application that was programmed 20 years ago and still used because we trust it today, but nobody knows how to use the user interface. Um, and, and, and all of these point applications that can be replaced um, with this, um, you know, platform approach, model writing environment, we can simply, you know, you know, take that capability and put it back into the platform. Um, think of um, the upstream industry. Um, integrated asset modeling is also not a novel concept, right? It's it's been discussed since a decade. Um, it leads to production increases, and uh, in you know, with today's simulators, we notice in the market that really. Um, those benefits can be achieved, but it's hard to maintain those systems, right? They're usually knit together from several different um, software packages, possibly from different suppliers. If one makes a release change, the other doesn't keep up. You know, it's not, you know, it also leads to a situation that this is not robust, right? It may break. And as you know, I mean, if you know, solutions are complex and, and, and they're hard to maintain, and typically they do break and they're not being maintained. In, you know, in SimCentral, um, in this um, unified uh, lifecycle simulation platform, um, you really can take the entire asset, right, from, from the well, through the gathering network, um, to the processing plant, right, and have this all in one model, equation oriented, it's going to solve very quickly, um, and there, you know, you know, so, you know, it's going to be very robust. Yeah. yeah, and to mention some other industries, I mean, one of the industries that has been very famous for simulation is the chemical industry and you know uh, SimCentral has the same thermodynamics that is you know, um, you know a single thermodynamic basis for all of our modeling uh, areas so we will be able to sort of tackle the complex uh, chemical processes and the complex thermodynamics that are involved in those so it will be robust uh, we'll be able to do a design of a distillation column and then immediately take that distillation column dynamic, but dynamic in a way that we can do full startup, shutdown, and controls checkout, rather than just dynamic simulation around the steady state condition. Well, and don't forget, uh, um, uh, you know, um, uh, monitoring of your uh, uh, units, right? Yeah, um, no, or, or even take it closed loop real time optimization. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. And then some of the other industries that we anticipate, I mean, we already have a strong presence in the power industry. And you know, this platform is perfect for uh, sort of extending our reach into that, into the power vertical. Also, the metals and mining industry, the same goes. We have uh, libraries uh, of uh, metals and mining uh, library objects. But because we're developing a platform, we're sort of breaking the mold of simulation. And we're actually enabling our systems integrators and third party companies that have IP that want to break into this, you know, deliver value to these other industries, metals and mining, water, wastewater, 
uh, power, they will be able to use this platform to build libraries and then you know, have IP that using this platform they can sell their own IP into our industry and then we have common clients and common business. Yeah, I mean, I mean at Schneider we have a lot of experience um, with platform approaches. Um, you know, for example, systems platform from Wonderware. You know, they do this since since so long, right? And they're very successful, and 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 they have a network of SIs and make yep. them very successful on yep. top of the platform. Yeah. So we think the same could happen for yes. well, processing. It will happen, yeah, for sure.